But we begin with no deal. Hunter Biden's agreement with federal prosecutors falls apart, leaving his tax fraud case in limbo. The federal judge overseeing the case raised questions about the terms of a plea agreement made back in June between Hunter Biden's lawyers and federal prosecutors. Without the judge's stamp of approval on the deal, the president's son pleaded not guilty to two misdemeanor tax charges. For now, CBS News senior investigative correspondent Catherine Herridge has the details from inside the Delaware courthouse. This morning as Hunter Biden entered the Delaware federal court, his team carried a sense of optimism. The plea deal would bring his legal troubles to an end. But Judge Mary Ellen Norica, a Trump appointee, said she needed more information before she could accept or reject the deal on misdemeanor tax charges and a gun violation. Telling the court she felt she was being asked to rubber stamp an agreement she had concerns about. There's no reason to have a train wreck like today. The hearing laid bare a critical disagreement between U.S. Attorney David Weiss, a Trump appointee, and Hunter Biden's legal team over whether the plea would close the door on future charges for other possible crimes. Weiss has said consistently the probe is ongoing. Scott Fredrickson is a former federal prosecutor. Um, how unusual is it for a plea agreement to fall apart? Well, plea agreements uh, fall apart every day in federal court, but they don't fall apart in high profile cases like this based on such fundamental misunderstandings. The judge also had constitutional questions on how the gun charge would be handled. In the plea agreement, the charge would be dismissed if Biden remains drug free and commits no additional crimes for two years. On Capitol Hill, the Republican House Speaker reacted. There shouldn't be two justice systems in America, and hopefully today that's what's being done. Hunter Biden left court and did not comment to reporters as originally planned. And Catherine Harridge joins me now from Wilmington, Delaware. Catherine, in your piece, you spoke with the former federal prosecutor, Scott Fredrickson, who said while a pleas deal is fall apart, they don't happen in cases like this. So what happened in cases like this? <laughs> well, John, I want to take you inside the courtroom to answer the question. There was one event which I think indicated to me that the deal was really falling apart. There was a recess called by the judge and Hunter Biden's lead attorney today, Chris Clark, was talking with a member of the U.S. attorney's team. And he said, this has all been negotiated. And the member of the U.S. attorney said, that's not in the agreement. And then Clark responded, well, I guess we just tear up the agreement. So that encapsulates the central problem in this plea agreement, that the two sides have essentially been talking past each other for months about what it covers. Hunter Biden's legal team believed that it would limit or shut the door on any future criminal charges. But the U.S. Attorney's Office believes that this investigation is ongoing and it left the door open for other charges in the future, John. That seems like the kind of thing you work out before you get to the big show in front of the judge. So what did the what exactly. are lawyers... <laughs> well, yeah, so that's a real because the judge has got you know the judge has got various concerns that are distinct from this talking past each other right. that you just described. So what happens now? What do the lawyers on both sides do now? Okay, so look, the lawyers have been given uh, 30 days by the judge to answer all of her questions, and then based on that information, she may ask for additional information from them, or she could make a decision on whether she can accept this plea or just simply reject the plea. Um, I think there are a lot of hints from the judge in court today that the bar is now very high for this plea agreement. She talked about the language not being standard, not being ordinary. And at a couple of points, she said to the U.S. Attorney's Office, look, you tell me what the precedent is for this kind of plea agreement. You tell me what authority there is in the case law to do this. And their answer to that question was, there isn't any. So in other words, it's like new case law they're trying to create here with this plea agreement. And that didn't seem to sit very well with the federal judge here, John. Fascinating. Catherine Harridge in Wilmington, Delaware. Thank you so much, Catherine. You're welcome.